The name Skerries links us to our Viking past. It derives from the Norse Skerr, meaning sharp sea rocks, and the four Skerries Islands, Red Island, now joined to the mainland, Colt Island, Inish Patrick and Shenick Island, are indeed bordered by such rocks. These islands contain a unique combination of archaeological, historical and natural heritage and surrounded by often treacherous sea currents can be viewed to their best from above. Originally known as Haven Island, there are various stories about how Red Island gained its name. Was it from the fishermen spreading hundreds of their reddish-brown nets on the island to dry? From the red coats of the artillery stationed in the Martello? Or perhaps most likely from the dying or barking of seals, which when laid out to dry, leach red dye into the soils and rocks of the island? Until the 19th century, access to Red Island was dependent on the low tides and sandbanks. The stretch of road which now extends by the sailing club yard was called the Dorn. The haven or harbour on Red Island was important for medieval times and was often used as an alternative for goods and trade when the port of Dublin silted up. Or at times of great plague such as that of 1575 when the Lord Deputy of Ireland landed at Skerries. The upkeep of the harbour was an expensive business and in 1759 the Irish Parliament granted £2,000 to John Hamilton to enlarge and extend the pier. Because of delays over planning and the debts of some of those involved, the work was not finished for another seven years. Further petitions were then made between 1767 and 1769 to extend the pier into 10 feet of water at low tide so that large ships could berth there. But it wasn't until 200 years later, in 1969, that the extension finally took place. The first lifeboat house was constructed in Skerries in 1854, and Red Island was the scene of many a rescue from ships that hit the sharp rocks. It was also where the Coast Guard cottages, salt works and coal yard were located. As it is today, Red Island was the focus of entertainment. In 1922, the Martello Ballroom and Refreshment Room was opened. It hosted theatrical groups and was pop, a popular venue for dancing and socialising. In the late 1940s, the Red Island Holiday Camp was built for Eamon Quinn, father of Fergal, the well-known supermarket owner. It offered a range of facilities, including 250 rooms, a dance hall, theatre, a miniature golf course, a sun lounge and, of course, a bar. During its peak activity in the 50s and 60s, it employed over 110 people, with most of its guests coming from the north of England and Northern Ireland. The troubles and cheap of sun holidays brought about its decline and it was demolished in 1980. The offshore Skerries Islands are collectively of international importance because of their bird life. On Colt Island, mallard, sheldrake and eider duck are among the species of bird, along with the grey seals that breed there. Colt, or Sinclair, as it was recorded on 16th century maps, appears as a large grassy mound where sheep were put to graze. However, infrared photography by the Marine Institute of Ireland identified a large circular enclosure, indicating settlement there, possibly from prehistoric times. In AD 431, Pope Celestine sent Palladius as the first bishop to the Irish believing in Christ. Some scholars believe that he landed on an island off Skerries, However, it is the association with St. Patrick, who apparently arrived a year later, that survives. St. Patrick landed on the island of Inish Patrick, or Church Island as it is known locally, with the true light of miraculous doctrine to light the thick clouds of ignorance. According to legend, the somewhat ungrateful people of Skerry stole, killed and ate St. Patrick's goat. When he returned to find his goat had been taken, St. Patrick took a giant step from the island with such force that his footprint still survives on the rocky shoreline. A monastery was founded on the island and in the year 798 it was raided by Vikings who broke the shrine of St. O'Connor. Despite this, the monastery remained important and there are references to leading churchmen including a royal prince of Brega dying there. In 1148 a synod marking an important stage in church reform and attended by over 200 priests and bishops including St. Malachy of Armagh was held there. Inish Patrick later became an Augustinian priory. The church was probably built in the 12th century and is located just below the highest point of the island, partly sheltered from east winds. 
The remains of the church consist of a nave and a chancel where the altar was placed. The north wall is the best preserved and contains a window with tufa insert, which has worn into a shape interpreted by many as the silhouette of a bishop. To the south of the church are the foundations of a rectangular structure, presumably a house for the monks, built above a terrace wall. The island was of interest to antiquarians and artists alike. In 1744, Isaac Butler recorded that the roof had recently fallen in, and a century later it was drawn by Georges Dunoy and painted by Nathaniel Home. A Mr Cochrane had the island ploughed in the 1820s. The old cemetery was uprooted and tombstones thrown into the sea. The workers also found a stone coffin. The coffin was brought to the mainland for use as a horse trough, while Cochrane is said to have kept a skull from the island on the mantelpiece of his house. A small house was built in the later 19th century, just above the beach on the western side of the island, and animals were grazed on the island until the 1950s. In AD 1220, Henry of London, Archbishop of Dublin, removed the, the Augustinian Priory from the island of St. Patrick to the prominence of Home Patrick. This new location for the Priory, although now on the mainland, was situated on high ground with rivers and streams to the north, east and south, and the sea to the west, thus retaining something of the characteristics of an island. This was also reflected in its place name, Holm being the Norse for island. Now the site of a church and graveyard, the gravestone of one of the last priors of Holm Patrick, Peter Mann, dating to 1520, is located at the base of the 19th century belfry, and glimpses of the priory such as medieval floor tiles and roof slates have been identified nearby. Shenick Island, or the island of Malloch as it was known in the 15th century, belonged to the priory of Home Patrick. There was worry about pirates who frequently landed on nearby Lambay Island. In a petition to the king it was argued that if some works of wood and stone or wooden fortifications or a wall were to be erected for receiving ships between that island of Malloch and the mainland, that it would be to the common advantage and defence of the king's subjects. The harbour was evidently built as Bohome Patrick and Skerries were listed as havens in 1577, although in 20 years the haven of Home Patrick was recorded as having fallen into decay. Hundreds of years later the Dorn of Shenick was still referred to as the part of the island where boats could land. Dominating the high point of Shenning Island is Martello Tower No. 10, one of 12 towers that were built along the coast of Fingal, including Tower No. 11 on Red Island. These towers were constructed in 1805 to guard against a Napoleonic invasion. The Martello Towers were designed and built by the Royal Engineers and manned by the Royal Artillery. The gun platform held a 24-pounder cannon. In addition to the tower, there are some associated structures surviving, including the roofless privy, a well and a series of boundary stones. The tower was disarmed in 1874 and later let out to Sir Roger Palmer of Rush. In 1917, the island was purchased by the McDonough family and was farmed up until the 1950s. Since 1987, it is a wildlife reserve run by the Irish branch of the Irish Wild Bird Council. The island is important for breeding birds and wintering fowl, and along with church and cold islands forms part of the Scaries Island Special Area of Protection for Birds.